So our key text for this morning is in Proverbs chapter 5. Today is July 5. In verse 11. Verse 11. Hello, Sister Merli. Please give my regards to Pastor Ferdinand on Amarasiga. Brother Edwin. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 11. And thou mourn at last, and thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Let this be a reminder to each and every one of us that life is like a journey. There will be a day that we will come at the end of our road. And sana when we look back, it will not be a day of mourning because it will be surely a day of reckoning. And the Bible is giving us this warning to really make sure tiyakin po natin that at the end hindi po tayo magiging luhaan. Kasi yung po ang sinasabi ng ating key text. When at the end you mourn. When at the end you weep when at the end you will be in lamentation. Thy flesh and thy body binanggit po dito. Thy flesh and thy body may hangganan po ang kagandahan ang kalakasan at ang kakayanan ng ating pisikal na pangangatawan. At kung atin pong isasalig lamang sa ating pisikal na katawan, ang ating magiging uh, buhay ay baka mangyari sa atin yung sinasabi nitong ating key text that at the end, we will mourn. The word mourn there was really roar, like the lion who was roaring, umaatungal, umangawa, nananaghoy. Hindi ko pa nadinig na umatungal ang leon eh. Oho, kayo ba nakarinig na ng leon na umaatungal? Oho, ah, nakarinig ako dalas ang umaatungal mga tao. <laughs> Pero ang aso rin, di ba? Pagka siya ay umaalong-ong, di ba yun? Di ba? Nasabi ng mga matatanda, baka may nakikita kung ano, panaghoy sa Tagalog or lamentation sa ating King James Bible. Panaghoy. Na sobrang nagpapakita ng great distress of mind, horror of conscience, and deep lamentations of emotions. Yet not having a true repentance, but only a sorrow that the world experience in time of great distress and to each individual a personal remorse alam niyo yun yung sabi nga nila nasa huli ang pagsisisi ito po yung sinasabi sa atin itong ating key text pero ito pong morning na ito o panaghoy is too late not so much on the account of the evil 
of sin, but too late because of the evil that comes by it. Hindi na dahil sa sobrang kasamaan ng ginagawa, kundi dahil sa kasamaan na dulot ng ginagawa. You see, ang problem kasi mga minamahal is sa gitna ng kasamaan na ating nagagawa, hindi tayo nakakaramdam ng pagkalungkot, ng pagsisisi. Kundi sa halip, sa kanan lamang natin mararamdaman yan, pagkatapos, hindi dahil sa kasamaan na ating nagawa, kundi dahil sa kasamaan na dulot ng ating ginawa. It is when the man could have no pleasure from it and in it, when he has not only lost his substance, but also his health, the loss of both which must be very distressing. It is at the end of his life when he can no longer continue in his self-willed and sinful pleasure. So kaya nagkakaroon ng pagkalungkot at pagkapanaghoy kapag ka hindi na pala kayang ipagpatuloy yung pagpapakasarap, pagpapakasaya, pagpapaka sige sa lahat ng ginagawang mali. Kasi pumalya ang kalusugan. Kasi naubos na ang kabuhayan. Ang daming ganyan, di ba? Na sige lang. Nakakatuwaan eh, nagkakasiyahan eh. Sige, hanggang maubos ang kabuhayan. Sige lang, hanggang pati ang kalusugan. Kulangin na. Kasi alam nyo, meron tayong hangganan, meron tayong limitation. Only God is unlimited. But we human beings, we are very limited. Kaya nga ang Diyos ang infinite at tayo ay hindi tayo infinite. We're finite people. We will come to the end of our road. We will come at the end of our rope. Nauubusan po tayo ng lakas. Nauubusan po tayo ng kakayanan. Ano mang kagandahan meron tayo, mawawala. Ano mang kalakasan sa ating katawan meron. Nauubos. Kaya be very careful how we spend our life. So, what would cause a man or a woman to mourn at the end? Pag-isipan po natin, ano ba yung maaring mga magdulot ng lubos na pagkalungkot at pananaghoy sa bandang huli? At wala po itong ano ha, eh, hindi po sinabi sa atin kung kristyano o hindi kristyano ang nalalagay sa ganitong sitwasyon. Pero sigurado, kung hindi ka kristyano, eh ito ang mangyayari sa isa ulit. Pero sa mga kristyano, posible kung hindi tayo magiging maingat. So una, when all our labor went in vain. That's the first one. Na at the end, we might mourn. When all our labor went in vain. This could happen only when you invested in the things of the world rather than on the things of the word. Napakahalaga po yan sa ating buhay. Sila sabi lagi sa atin yan ang salita ng Diyos. At kahit ang Panginoong Jesus, pinaalalahanan tayo tungkol dyan. You see, sa ating buhay, we are trying to build. And we put all our effort And we do our best to build something that we could be proud of, something that we could take honor and pleasure for that matter. But most people would build on the things of the world. But I hope we Christians will build on the things 
of the Lord and then on His Word. Kasi mga minamahal, baka mauwi sa wala ang ating pinaghihirapan. Like the person in the parable of our Lord Jesus Christ who built his life on the sand. He labored so hard. You see, the problem there was it, it, it was not a question of was he able to build? What was his difference with the wise man? The wise man built his house. The foolish man built his house. They were both successful in building. But at the end, the foolish man mourned because he built his house upon the sand and it does not take a lot of time before he realized na sayang lang ang kanyang pinaghirapan. So don't build your life on the sand. Don't build your life on the things of the world. Dahil sa bandang huli, magiging luhaan ka. Sabi nga sa Psalms 127 verse 1, Except the Lord build the house, they labored in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen wake it, but in vain. Naintindihan po ba natin ang sinasabi ng Word of God? Except the Lord build the house, they labored in vain that build it. Except the Lord keepeth the city, the watchman wicked but in vain. Ano yung isang bagay na nag-stand out dito? Yung partnership. Opo, yung partnership. Kung itatayo mo ang iyong buhay na mag-isa ka lang, nagpapagal ka na mapupunta lang sa wala. Kung po proteksyonan natin ang ating kabuhayan, ang ating bayan, na tayo lang, kahit lagyan pa natin ng maraming security guard, sabi dito, without the Lord, the watchman wake it but in vain. It is very important, mga minamahal, na sa ating pagpapagal, kasama natin ang Panginoon, kapartner natin, Kaya nga, di ba, sabi ni Apostle Paul, we are co-laborers with God. That is very important. Na sa ating labor, kyak natin, ginagawa natin ang lahat ng ating ginagawa with God. Kasi di ba, minsan, ang katwira natin sa buhay, pagka tayo ay masyado nagiging palalo, ha? Nasasabi natin ito sa ating mga mahal sa buhay, nasasabi natin ito sa ating mga kaibigan, nasasabi natin ito sa ating mga kasama sa trabaho, with or without you. Kakayanin ko. Papakita ko sa inyo, patutunayan ko sa inyo. I will amount to something with or without you. Kaya ba nga yun eh? But you can say that. And you can prove that to many people. But not with God. Not with God. Sabi nga ng Panginoong Jesus, di ba? For without me, you can do nothing. That doesn't mean that you will not be able to do anything. Like the foolish man, you will be able to build something. But what would be the result of what you built is what is being in question here. Will it last? Will it, st- will it stand the test of time? Or at the end, it will be just be a reason for you to mourn, to regret everything. So, we mourn at the end when all our labor went in vain. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 gives us the best labor that we could engage, we could engage in. Sabi po roon, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much then that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor 
is not in vain in the Lord. So, piliin po natin. Let us choose wisely. Huwag po nating i-left out ang Panginoon sa ating mga ginagawa. Talagang isa buhay natin, yung Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him. Give Him the credit of all that you will do and what you have done. Let it be said, sabi ni Apostle Paul, it is not I, but the grace of God which was in me. Pangalawa, a man, will, a man or a woman will mourn at the end when all his or her labor went in vain. Pangalawa, when all our love wax in coldness. When all of your love wax in coldness. Check this out. Yung mga pag-ibig mo dyan. Yung mga pagmamahal mo dyan. Yung mga pinagugugulan mo at pinag i mo ng iyong damdamin. That you pour all, all that your heart could give. Uh, Biblia, merong isa nagsusumamo. Yes. Pleading that we give all our love, all our hearts to Him. First and foremost. First. Gusto niya na siya ang ating mahalin ng lubos. Gusto niya na sa kanya natin ibuhos ang buong pagmamahal na meron tayo. But what happened? Instead na siya ang ating pagbuhusan ng ating buong pagmamahal, ay kung kani-kanino natin ibinuhos ang ating puso't kaluluwa. And at the end, we will mourn. Because we found out, or we will find out, that those people whom we love would never love us back the way that we wanted them to love us. Kasi mga minamahal, tao tayo eh. And our love, left alone by the things of God the Lord, has no meaning at all. Ang pag-ibig po kasi ay ang Diyos sa maraming tao. Which is wrong. Huwag mong gawing Diyos ang pag-ibig. Sabi ng kanta ng ano ba yon? Sino ba yung kumanta nun? Na huwag mo daw gawing mundo ang tao. Alam mong tao lang, ginawa mong mundo. O ayan. Diba? Pero ako, ang panawagan ko sa inyo, huwag niyong gawing pag-ibig. Or huwag niyong gawing pag-ibig. Gawin mong Diyos. Sapagkat ang Diyos ay pag-ibig, so iisipin mo, ang pag-ibig ay Diyos. Hindi ho, magkaiba ho yung dalawang yun. <laughs> it's not two of the same thing. It's two of different things. Pag sinabi natin, God is love, Correct yan. Check. Ang Diyos ay pag-ibig. Pero pagka ang pag-ibig ginawa mong Diyos, ex yan. Hindi yan magdadala sa iyo sa kasiyahan hanggang sa huli. Make sure that yung pinag i mo ng iyong puso at kaluluwa, ng iyong pagmamahal, ay hindi ang mga bagay o ang mga meron lamang ang sanglibutang ito. Sabi po sa atin sa Matthew chapter 24 verse 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Kung saan ang kasalanan ay namamayani, kung saan ang kasalanan 
ay nagpapatuloy ang pag-ibig ng marami ay patuloy na lumalamig. Hindi na nga alam ng sanglibutan ito kung ano ba talaga ang ibig sabihin ng pag-ibig. That is why they cannot appreciate what Christ has done for them. They just turn their back and careless when they hear they hear the preaching of the gospel of what Christ has done of how he gave his life for us because of love because of love yun ang dahilan bakit namatay si Jesus Christ sa cross di ba because of love for God so loved the world greater love had no man than this sabi ni Jesus Christ that I lay down my life. Yung pong pagkamatay ni Kristo sa krus, ang pinaka maliwanag na larawan ng tunay na pag-ibig. Selfless, self-giving, not self-serving, not selfish. Pero marami sa atin, we would rather invest all our hearts desire sa mga bagay na hindi tayo kayang mahalin. Sabi nga rito sa 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now watch this. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Diba? Pumakalat, nagtitrending, sinasabi ng mga Gen Z na ito, at minsan, pati yung mga millennials, sinasabi nila, walang forever sa pag-ibig. You know why? Sapagkat ang pag-ibig na alam nila ay yung pag-ibig sa sanlibutan. And the world pass it away and the last thereof. Yun yung pag-ibig na alam ng marami. The last thereof. The pride of life. The last of the eyes. Pagyan ang basihan ng pagmamahal. Yung pagmamahal na yan, manlalamig. And at the end, you will mourn. But the love that is of God, sabi ng Bible, may forever. <laughs> He that doeth the will of God, abideth forever. Kaya, kung kayo ay magi invest ng inyong pagmamahal. Unahin mo ang Diyos. Unahin mo ang Diyos. At siya ang gawin mong prioridad sa iyong pagmamahal. Dahil kung hindi, at the end, you will mourn. When all our labor went in vain, when all our love wax in coldness. Pangatlo, when all, when all our loss won nothing. When all our loss won nothing. Why would men and women weep at the end? When all our labor went in vain, when all our love waxed in coldness, when all our loss won nothing. Parang ang hirap intindihin ng pangatlo, no? May intindihan nyo, isipin nyo lang. When all our loss One nothing. Alam niyo ba sa buhay na ito, para manalo ka, you have to lose. ba? Diba? Yan yung sinasabi na principle ng Bible na winning by losing. You have to lose to win. At lahat, alam niya ng lahat ng businessman. May mga loss na nai-incur ang kanilang business. But that is not 
hindi yan ano eh, that is not the issue. The issue is, with all these losses, are we going to gain? With all these losses, are we going to win? Kasi you have to lose some to win some. At dapat, when you equate the two, afterwards, you might have lost something, but you have gained so much because of your loss. Oh, bigyan ko kayo ng example. Yung isang gustong mag-build, mag-bodybuild, o yung mga babae na gusto mag-fit in figure, or maging healthy and sexy, hindi ka pwedeng magkaroon ng great body na sabi nga nila ay beach body unless you're willing to lose lose some of the favorite foods that you eat oh, lose those weight that you have gained pag kaya, kaya mong ilose yan then kaya mong i-gain yung gusto mong maging klase ng katawan. Oh, like my brother, si RJ, di ba? Nakita niyo yung discipline that ini-engage niya to build and be fit in his body. Hindi yun nakukuha ng basta-basta. You have to lose some to win some. Si Apostle Paul po, mga minamahal, nag-engage din sa ganyan. Tingnan niyo po, babasahin ko sa Philippians chapter 3, verse 4. Ito po yung mga ilulus ni Apostle Paul. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. He's talking about the flesh and everything that he could be proud of about his flesh, about his achievement in life, meaning to say. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning seal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Now listen to what he says. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Are you willing to lose everything to win Christ? Or are we losing Christ to win everything? Yung magiging sagot mo sa tanong na yan will determine if at the end you will mourn. Because only one life so soon it will pass and only what's done for Christ will last. Choose Christ. Siya dapat ang mawin mo sa buhay mo. You can win everything in this life. But if you lose Christ, you will lose everything. Paul, he was wise enough to be willing to lose everything that he may win Christ. We will mourn at the end when all our loss won nothing. But if you will lose for Christ, all your loss will win everything. Everything that the things of God can offer. Kaya wag po nating ilus ang buhay natin for the world's sake. But let's lose our life for Christ's sake. Sabi nga ni Jesus Christ, He who loses life for my sake shall find it. So, tiyakin po natin na yung buhay natin ay mapapagtagumpayan natin at the end ang para sa mga bagay ng Panginoon. Last, we will mourn at the end when all our loss won nothing and when all our life wasted to the end.
Ano kaya ang magiging dulo ng ating buhay? Kasi it does not matter how you start it. And it doesn't even matter how you continue. What matters most is at the end of this journey called life, will you find your life wasted or rewarded? Ang sabi po ng Bible, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There's the promise of the word of God, mga minamahal. Rewards are awaiting us. If we will not waste our life sa mga walang kabuluhang bagay, Sabi nga ni Jesus Christ, what shall it profit? Alam nyo, ang Bible is talking about profit palagi eh. Pakinabang. Minsan, di ba, pag ang soul winning tayo, sabi ng mga tao, may mapapakinabangan ba ako dyan? At minsan, napapakamot ng uli soul winner. Tapos, wala ho eh. Eh, wala pala akong mapapakinabangan niya. Huwag mo na i-share sa akin. Kasi naman, bakit mo naman sasabihin walang mapapakinabangan? May mapapakinabangan. Sa Panginoon, may mapapakinabangan. Hindi nga lang yung pakinabang na gusto nila na biglang yaman at biglang angat sa buhay. Pero sigurado may pakinabang, especially at the end of this journey called life. Sapagkat, will your life be exchanged for the life in eternity with all the blessings and presence of God? Or will your life now be exchanged for death and torments in hell later on after life? All, maaring at the judgment seat of Christ. Kung sabi mo, save ka eh. Eh di makakarating ka sa langit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sabi ng iba, yay! Pupunta ako sa langit. But wait. Pupunta ka nga sa langit. Ano naman napakinabang mo? Baka naman pagdating sa langit, pulubi ka pa rin. Ano siya kayo? Kasi dito sa lupa, may mga pulube, di ba? May mga beggars. Sa langit ba, pastor, may pulube? Hindi ko masabi. Pero ang alam ko, hindi lahat mayaman sa langit. May mga nalugi. May mga naging bankrupt. Oo nga, nasa langit. Pero bangkarote. Talaga, wala. Sabi ng Bible, He shall suffer loss, yet He Himself is saved. Nababasa niyo ba yun? Life was wasted. Hindi pwedeng kristyano na dito sa lupa eh, yung winawaldas ang iyong buhay, tapos pagdating sa langit, iisipin mo, Pare-pareho lang tayo ng kalagayan doon. Pare-pareho tayong nandoon. Pero hindi pare-pareho ang magiging kalagayan. Kasi may mga nagtapat sa Panginoon and they shall reign with Him. At merong hindi mga nagtapat sa Panginoon. At ang sabi ng Bible, they shall suffer loss. Think about it. Sabi nga po mga minamahal, our life may be wasted. So make sure you are not wasting your life for nothing. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Dalawang bagay yun, di ba? Lose your own soul or give in exchange for your soul. Ano ba ang Ang ibig sabihin nun, yung isa, nawala sa kanya ang kanyang kaluluwa. And that's the person who goes to hell. Yung isa, walang naging kapalit ang kanyang kaluluwa. And that could be you, Christians. Na yung kaluluwa mo, walang naging worth. 
walang naging pakinabang. Kasi dapat ang ating buhay may pakinabang. At ang magiging pakinabang lang ng ating buhay ay kapag tayo nakapagdala din ng ibang buhay sa langit. Kasi hindi natin madadala ang ating kayamanan sa langit. Hindi natin madadala ang anumang bagay sa langit. Madala lang natin sa langit ay ang mga kaluluwa na inaakay natin sa Panginoon. For what is our crown and rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of the Lord. Yun lang ang magiging worth ng buhay natin pagdating natin sa langit, mga minamahal, na madidinig natin ng Panginoon, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, because you have not wasted your life on the things of this world, but you have amount to something worth than everything, every treasure. That one day, we shall shine, sabi sa Bible, sabi sa Denya, like the stars in heaven, because you have turned many to righteousness. You have win and have won the rewards of the Lord. This is another edition of our Hope Goes On. Sana po mapag-isip-isipan natin. Will I mourn at the end? Or will I be satisfied in the presence of God? God bless you. Have a great Lord Day, Lord's Day. See you. God bless.